everyone and welcome back to Fruitful Roots. My name is Marla and today's video is going to be just a little bit different. Instead of talking about goats or chickens or homesteads, uh, we're talking about the house. So the property that we were blessed with had a, an older manufactured home on it and we decided that before we moved in and partially while we were already moved in, we were going to be doing some updates. Now they're not all complete and in the end I will have you know a video of more of a before and after but today we're specifically talking about the kitchen it had those you know brown orange cabinets and we had those in Hutto didn't really like them then and didn't like them when we moved in so we painted and I'm very very happy with how it turned out but since this was not it's not in the plan for this to be our forever home it didn't make a lot of sense for us to pour a lot of money into this and we really originally we're gonna put a lot of time into it but you know how projects go take way longer than you think but um, I did you know do a low-key full kitchen renovation and uh, but on a budget and so I want to show you guys that video and some of this footage is from months ago when we first started on the house and obviously we've been living here for a few months now and and um, this you know just getting things done a little at a time so this is what's been done and completed first. So here's the kitchen video, but keep in mind that with the prices that I talk about, I didn't include things like the painter's tape, uh, brushes, rollers, anything like that, because to me, we already had quite a few of those things, but to me it's almost a negligible cost when you're looking at the overall grand scheme of things. And you know, some of those things, aside from like the tape and stuff and you're able to reuse those anyway so I'm really talking more in general about like the paint the backsplash um, stuff like that and so just keep that in mind but in this video I'm going to tell you what I would absolutely do again in a forever home what I would change about some of the processes that I did and what I would absolutely never do again and that exists so Here's the video. I'm very, very excited to show it to you guys. I would love to hear what you think about it, what you might try to do yourself, what you've done before. I'd love to hear those things. So guys, just go ahead and take a look. Thank y'all so much for watching and God bless. Hey y'all, so here we are just getting started with this entire process. And what I did here was I prepped the cabinets and the countertop in the same way. And I degreased them, I very lightly sanded them, and then I cleaned them with soap and water. A lot of people get really turned off with painting their uh, cabinets just because there's usually a lot of prep work. Uh, I took a few shortcuts that I had seen online and um, I used chalk paint which also greatly reduced the amount of prep work. But I didn't take the doors off because I saw somebody else just open them, paint them, and um, they were able to just dry that way instead of having to do two coats, flip it, and all that stuff. So that saved a ton of time and the chalk paint dries just so fast um, so I was able to get the coats on really quickly. Uh, so here we go are getting started. I did use uh, the bare chalk paint and I ended up buying two cans of that so that was uh, $40 right there and then I did go ahead and top that off with polyurethane just to seal it in and that was $20 as well. And I didn't want to go with the wax route to seal in the chalk paint and you definitely want to seal it just because it is porous so if something is on it it could stain a little bit more easily um, but there's a lot more maintenance with the wax and so I opted to go with the polyurethane especially with the kiddos uh, I felt like that would just be a lot easier um, and also with the cabinets what I ended up doing I also bought some hardware off of Amazon um, some knobs and it was a 30 pack for $22 um, so that is part of the expense in there as well. But I was actually pleasantly surprised with how easy this part of the entire process was. Um, I think that the cabinets just make the kitchen look so much brighter, so much more cheerful. Um, I'm very, very happy with how the cabinets turned out. In fact, I think it's actually my favorite part of what we did in the kitchen. So I would do this again in a new place for sure. I mean, I think it looks great. I included this clip for anybody else who might live in a manufactured home. Um, we did end up using some pill and stake backsplash, backsplash, and so um, I wanted to pop off those little boards. I nailed in the little, hammered in the little nails, sanded it down just to give it a smoother finish, um, and I think it makes it look way better, just flat. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna give these pill and stake backsplashes a try because. I will not use wallpaper. We shall see. I have no idea how this is gonna go. 
Jesus help us. So this actually ended up being very easy and it was such a quick process also. The hardest part was cutting around outlets and that wasn't difficult to do at all, especially once you get that ruler out, which I probably should have done a little earlier. But we actually had to buy five of these at $34.95 a piece and we had quite a bit left over. It was just kind of cut into weird shapes. Um, so we, we might could have gotten away with four of them, but we did end up having to buy five of them. And I actually don't mind the pill and stick backsplash. I thought it looked kind of cool. It was kind of fun to do. So I wouldn't be opposed to putting this somewhere in the future. I wanted to show Optimist me. <laughs> Super excited to get there early in the morning so I can get those countertops knocked out. It did not end up this way, unfortunately. The countertops are the part that I would probably change. What I ended up doing, and I went back and forth on this, uh, I ended up doing pill and stick countertops and then covered it with epoxy to give it a more permanent feel. And the, the problem honestly came down to the pill and stick countertops. The person at one of the big box stores recommended doing this over one of the paint kits because a, I did have a little bit of a limit on time, <clears throat> but didn't know how it was gonna go over the tile um, if on the end there, the green tile, and then um, it just, it seemed like this might be a quicker thing. That is not true at all. This was incredibly time consuming, incredibly difficult to do with just one person. Um, there were quite a few bubbles, but I couldn't just keep pulling it up and then laying it down because I did kind of go, um, on the cheaper end with the pill and stick countertops and so it tore pretty easily and I was kind of running out of extra there at the end. The hard part here was the edges, the curved edges with the tile again. That's where a lot of the bubbles came up and it was very difficult to get it smoothed out over that. So I think honestly if you had straight edges it might work out for you pretty well. It did not work out for me as well. I would 100% go with the kit next time. Like if there, if I ever had to do it, I would I would go a different direction. Um, I actually know people who have had success with the kits, and I should have followed my gut. But I tried to take a shortcut, and here we are. Fortunately, with the marbling on it, it hides most of the imperfections pretty well. I was very nervous about the epoxy and that actually ended up being the easiest part of the countertop process. It was actually kind of fun to do also. So we got very lucky in how it seemed to be going while I was installing it. I was very nervous. It turned out pretty, pretty well. It looks pretty good. It was just a very frustrating process and that's probably why I wouldn't recommend it. It, it actually looks pretty decent, honestly. I, I'm I'm pretty happy with it. I would just get help next time. I had been planning on doing quite a bit more and that is all so far out the window that I can't even see it anymore. So, on to the next one. This side was so much easier. If you do decide to go this route, I would highly recommend putting the back part on first like I'm doing right there. It saved me a lot of heartache, a lot of time, and a lot of torn pieces. Definitely do that. And then of course laying it down flat right there was incredibly easy to do. Night and day difference. I would do that all day, every day. It's those stinking sinks and that stinking cutting board. <sighs> Epoxying it should be. I am very sad to say that my camera died before I could get the epoxy part of it filmed. I was stressing so much about that part and it was actually kind of fun. Um, I would epoxy something again, like that was fun. And it's so easy to do, just mixing it really well for three to five minutes, doing the pour on top, letting it um, kind of roll off and then using a heat gun, not a blow dryer, but a heat gun to get the bubbles out. And to help clean up the lines at the end, like the corner line right there or um, right around the edges of the sinks and everything, I did go ahead and grab those areas to get a nice clean finish. The end, of course, here are the before pictures. Here are the deering pictures. And then finally, the end result. 
very happy with it. I'm very happy with how it turned out overall, even the hardest part, the countertops. I love how it turned out. I think it is phenomenal. It's just so much brighter and I love it. You guys, thank you so much for watching and God bless.